Hi, hopefully my computer can handle both. Um, my computer's been a little bit glitchy, so hopefully I can keep up here on Facebook. If not, I'm live on Instagram too, so if it's glitchy on Facebook, we'll at least have it uh, at full speed from Instagram. <clears throat> Just a chest. <laughs> All right, so thank you all for logging on. Um, today is, you know, an interesting day as it has been in the news and everything. I'm going to talk a little bit on that. Um, yeah, so happy Modern as Fuck Monday, the day where I am here going live every Monday and on my social media to cover topics on what it means to be modern. Hi, thank you guys. Thank you for joining. <laughs> um, sorry. As usual, I have to make sure that I look really good. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, every Monday I go on social media to cover topics on what it means to be modern, or more specifically, how to be a boss in a modern world. Um, so. Those of you who have joined me for the past month know at least the depth of the topics I have covered and will cover in the future over you know the number of topics I have planned. I will probably be going live every Monday for the rest of my life. So you have so much to look forward to. Um, wow, thank you for bombarding me with hearts. That is kind of special. <laughs> So yeah, topics like design, entrepreneurship, inspiration, style or aesthetic, design thinking. I covered all sorts of tips for success a couple weeks ago. Um, design theory, marketing, marketing creativity, um, basically anything relevant to the concept of modernity. And the key word there was um, relevance. Um, because, well, what do you think makes something truly modern? And that's kind of the core of it is it's, it's relevant to what's going on in the world around you. Um, so yeah, relevance is like the relationship that something has to the here and now and to your own experience and perception and also what is the context of it? Does it have a context? Does it relate to history? Does it relate to you know a feeling of the times? Um, just to put this into perspective, the fashion industry or fashion design history is kind of a great indicator of how design and modernity go hand in hand. Because if you look throughout the course of fashion history, you'll find that the most notable designers in each decade really had a sense for what was um, relevant or what were it's like the zeitgeist of the time or like the undertone or undercurrent of that time they're able to kind of pick up on this and translate it into a design and that's kind of what has even made them timeless or you know continue to you know go on and be like member or remembered and like more more decades when sorry I'm like stuttering. <laughs> I'm just distracted by this endless stream of hearts going on in my uh, Facebook feed. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the the zeitgeist is essentially like what is the undercurrent of that time period. Um, you know, Chanel is like kind of the quintessential example of relevancy in design because she took something like tweed, which was considered like a cheap material or you know underclass and she actually made it into high fashion so and now it's a classic item to have like the Chanel tweed like wool coat so um, with like pearls and stuff so that's an example of her taking something that was like from World War II and you know where materials were scarce and not as available and she made it into high fashion and now it's like you know one of the most of a fashion, global luxury fashion brand. So Chanel was very in touch with the undercurrent of that time period. Um, so anyways, I won't go too in depth on relevancy. That's kind of like a, maybe a future topic, but I just wanted to kind of bring it up because um, 
of, you know, the news. And, um, you know, there have been, I guess, like last Monday as well as this Monday, um, both kind of catastrophic news events. Um, but, and, you know, actually record breaking. Um, like, and I bring these up because they've almost led me to question, like, the integrity of going live to talk about something maybe that isn't quite related to what most people are being affected by currently and most people are, you know, responding to. Um, you know, specifically I'm referencing last Monday was the deadliest mass shooting committed in the United States. And then um, this week I have friends and family that have had to evacuate from, evacuate from what is the the most highly destructive fire emergency in California history. So, um, and I do have family, they are safe, but they had to evacuate at 1.30 in the morning and um, it's likely that their home is burned down. So, you know, I just bring these up because, you know, in a sense, you know, I am impacted by them. Obviously I'm not shutting them down, but it's also part of what Doing this live series for me is about, um, it's kind of having these talks to inspire like critical thinking, but also a greater connection to the world um, around you and the world at large. And um, for me, like studying design has been what has really led me to think this way and to see the connection between, you know, making an observation or having a source of inspiration and honing it in and taking that in and kind of breaking down what about that is really inspiring to you and then almost creating something tangible from it. Um, that is essentially the design process. But it relates to all sorts of different things, um, including like how we process our emotions or um, the current events like around the world. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's not really an easy process, <laughs> but I find it relevant to how we as humans can process, you know, in the sense how we are being bombarded right now by catastrophe and cast, you know, just almost like a sensory overload, <laughs> um, to have that sense of, you know, a way to process your emotions or inspiration. And I hope that regardless of your current priorities as a human being, um, you could at least be, you know, observant of the world and considerate of the world around you. Um, I have, you know, peers and mentors that share a sense of hope and activism around the state of the world. Um, but that's also part of doing the modernist fuck is just to, per to approach this perspective in addition to the activism, but also from the angle of design because and entrepreneurship because it gives a certain perspective and strategy as well on um, how you do want to deal with things in the current state of the world. And you know, learning design has also helped me feel stronger and even happier as an individual despite a lot of, like the trauma and sadness on here um, that you know, we are experiencing as individuals and having like design thinking make, helps me to find purpose and meaning and even overcome certain obstacles. So I hope overall that the modern as fuck topics inspire a certain way of, of living that is inspiring. <laughs> Sorry, I was just like stutter my way through all of this. <laughs> Hi mom, thank you for joining, I love you. My mom's on Instagram Live, so. Oh, okay, so I have a request for knitwear technology. Okay, I can do more research on that. I'm not super specialized in uh, knitwear, but um, I'm definitely open to feedback and suggestions for any topics you want me to cover. Um, so yeah, at some point I will even go further into relevance and talk about other favorite topics of resilience and endurance. Um, these are kind of two important topics that highlight, you know, the ability of humans to overcome extreme and even, you know, traumatic 
events and you know and through this whole uh, process of going through the darkness or experiencing something darker you can actually produce tremendous beauty in the world so that's also one of my huge passions is in just you know the level of experience that and perception that we have as humans our ability to create and produce beauty from certain things even the darker ones <laughs> So that was my long segue uh, into today's topic, which is technique. Um, because technique is kind of a form of relevance. Um, you know, having a strong technique demonstrates an understanding and form of respect for the industry or history of what you are representing. So you can just communicate kind of your level of experience or your dedication to your craft just by sheer technique alone. Um, um, it's a combination of skill building, practice and repetition, uh, length of study, and then curated information and a skill set to be excelled at in a particular discipline. So they say like 10,000 hours of practice and skill building in technique will lead you into uh, artistry. Um, but for me, the catch here is that strong technique does not always create strong artistry. And to um, illustrate this, I'll kind of share with you my own relationship with technique. <laughs> um, you know, it started for me with when I was very young and I studied ballet since the age of three. So, Ballet for me is like my the technical backbone because, um, you know, in dance, you can build a lot from having a strong ballet foundation. Um, but the reason oh, I have lost my connection to or installed, sorry about connection issues. I think the Wi Fi is actually out for a big chunk of Northern California right now as well. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Hopefully you can get back on, Mom. I love you. Um, sorry about that. OK, back to talking about ballet. So ballet is a great example of technique and dance because you also kind of build, yay, you're back, Mom. You build your entire dance foundation essentially at the bar. So first 45 minutes or so of a ballet class consists of a series of exercises that all have a certain order and a certain reason for why you do them. And that is so that you can go out away from the bar and translate the movement um, in space in whatever routines. But everything that you need to you know to do a ballet routine away from the bar, you practice at the bar at the start of each class. So ballet is a great example of developing the repetition, developing almost the muscle memory or you know, the really internalizing the skill set that you need to dance and then just practicing it so it becomes ingrained but also improving, practicing for the sake of um, improving. <laughs> my mom says she is a ballet school dropout. That's a funny backstory. My mom actually got me back into ballet because I took a few years off like from nine to like age 13 and I went back to ballet with my mom and we took a class together but I can went on to continue doing ballet but she dropped out so it's okay mom I haven't taken a ballet class actually in a few years so this is why I'm a dropout as well <laughs> um so yeah that's you know Obviously, having a strong uh, dance background in ballet is a strength, but here's the catch again is that, you know, it's influenced every other modality of dance that I've tried to do. Like, if you see me dance hip hop, it's like straight up ridiculous because I am so here, like composed and like, posture that I can't, you know, get down to earth and do a hip hop routine. Although I can do the moves and follow the choreography. It just totally doesn't translate as like the style of hip hop. So, um, you know, that's kind of 
in a sense, why you might want to choose the technique that you really invest in learning wisely, because it can actually um, really influence your ability to translate other things. <laughs> so, you know, I don't mind that I'm not great at hip hop, because, you know, ballet is the, at the core of like, how I identify as a dancer. So, you know, it's like pros and cons. <laughs> Um, and then something that similar ha has happened too when I picked up like new styles of dance or a new technical approach to dance. This actually happened um, in belly dancing. There's kind of one really strong technical um, format in belly dance that came out of the Bay Area and it's the Suhala format. But I had studied belly dance for about four years before I even learned any of that technique. And when I started to learn it, I almost went through this period of time where I was, I felt like my dancing was coming across as robotic almost. And it's just because I hadn't really internalized the technique or I had to work through it and improve upon it enough that it could not just be like, I'm on stage trying to figure out this technique, but more like this technique is actually strengthening my ability to communicate as a performer. So that's kind of the summary of technique is you want to choose the technique wisely and what's really going to help you build your skill set to do what you want to do artistically. Um, and then you have to prepare for kind of the challenges that might come across in learning this technique and what, you know, might not, is not going to be like, okay, I'm learning a new technique and I've improved. You might actually get worse before it gets better. Um, which I have another example of this, which I hope this inspires you as well to really, if there's something that you really want to do or learn how to do, um, you know, be patient with yourself and just stay focused on the goals um, and really the benefits of what learning a new technique could do for you. Um, so for me, this example is drawing. Um, I've gone through so much to improve my ability to draw because I never, I drew a little bit as I grew up, but I kind of, you know, just lost interest in it because I was also doing music and dance. So I never really like spent a lot of time just trying to draw what I saw, like as much as some of my peers in school who have been drawing since they, you know, that was like their self-expression or their outlet growing up was to draw. Um, it's pretty meditative. So these are my friends who can just draw what's in their head with no problem. And then here I am learning, you know, midway through my 20s how to draw with no experience really whatsoever. This is about five years ago now. And oh my, my first drawings were just absolutely horrible. <laughs> And, you know, I was just aware of this and I just really just kind of bit the bullet and I kept drawing. And, uh, you know, years passed by and I still was not able to draw. And, and I've been drawing for grad school. So I've been practicing all the techniques, looking at books, but it's how do you translate an idea in your head and get it on paper, but also even if the idea is not fully formed in your mind, how do you use drawing to figure out the idea and make the idea real? Well, if you don't even know how to draw to begin with, this is like one of the hardest possible things. So, um, you know, I just use that as an example because for me, it, it was a technique that was almost seemingly impossible to learn and I even went through it having, you know, teachers that made me feel like I just couldn't draw and that was um, the end all, that I couldn't improve. It was already too late, I was too old, it wasn't in my nature, like how dance is in my nature because I learned from such a young age. Um, but, you know, I, I can say now that I'm, I'm starting to learn how to draw. <laughs> And it's been so worth it because you do learn from something from that one, what you're capable of, that you are capable of achieving what you would, didn't think 
as possible. And two, also that um, because I tried so hard, in a sense, that weakness has become almost a strength. Like really my, you know, studying all the fine details and looking really through all of like, you know, the different technical approaches to drawing, but as well as really just putting myself through the struggle of just one, just drawing what I saw on paper to to tracing over things or just drawing with a ruler or curves, like going through every single different kind of potential way to approach drawing and design has you know, been time consuming, but overall it's, you know, it's led me to know what is possible and as far as learning, even older to, um, you know, not what comes naturally, but what you really have to work for. Um, so yeah, technique can take a lot of time and dedication. Um, and it also takes good days and bad days as well, because when you really go to learn something, um, you kind of encounter maybe a certain, whatever, depending on your mood, depending on your state of mind, you can encounter a flow where you're like, oh, this is easy, and you just create like, effortlessly or you're just things are coming naturally and easy ideas are flowing and then you go through the next day and everything's impossible and hard and you're sluggish and just nothing's working nothing's translating um so the key here for improving your technique is that during those times when it is difficult are when you really want to push yourself the hardest. I think people can really relate to this a lot in working out as well, like those days when you don't want to get up and work out and you just want to stay in bed, and bed sounds like the most best thing in the world, but if you actually do drag yourself out of bed and go to do your workout, like your day is just like 10 times better and you progress. So that's kind of the same for learning a new technique or learning a new artistic process. Just you really want to push yourself the hardest when it is the hardest because in that kind of area of problem solving, when it's not coming natural, is when you have the greatest potential to grow and have like a new discovery. Um, this happens all the time when I'm designing is that you know, I just can't even fathom doing any design work at all. So maybe I'll just kind of just pick anything to get the ball rolling too. Like just do some loose drapes, force myself to draw some weird shapes that don't mean anything. And then I just see something like within the layout and, I, and it's like the dots connect and I realize that's my next direction. Um, and, and it ends up being something really great like I mean minimalism is kind of fitness for me but that kind of golden moment I had when I was working on a design idea around minimalism and I realized like how it all connected with my background and experience in science and mathematics was because I was you know not wanting to work not wanting to do design um feeling kind of you know, down on myself as well. Like I wasn't really progressing fast enough that I wasn't necessarily being as successful as I wanted in my school program. But, you know, I had a deadline. I still had to do it anyways. And I ended up discovering something um, special, the next direction um, for my whole design aesthetic. So yeah, think of those good or same thing of those bad days is you know a step in the right direction. Um, okay, so then here's the another kind of challenge with technique is well you can't learn everything. Um, so you know what do you how do you approach this fact? Well, this goes back to about you know my talk about ballet and hip hop. How I'm just not really natural at hip hop and even though I've tried it, you know, the ballet overpowers. Um, so that's kind of, you know, in a sense, a way of catering your technique or curating your technique to go in the direction that you want to go. So you can look to, you know, people that admire. I've 
friends that I've seen like focus their mind on something and then they almost transform themselves. So you can do that for yourself too. Focus on your mind on what's kind of impossible or unachievable, but if you were able to reach that, it would be like amazing. Like you'd be happy and accomplished and it'd be well worth the battle. So you can do that for yourself and pick something. And then you curate the technique you need to achieve that. And you start practicing that technique and teach, or seek out classes and to learn that technique that you need to get there. Um, and then just go for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, just begin with the end in mind and just ride the waves of the journey, but keep going and um, just set yourself up for what is possible and then just see what it takes to get there. Um, that's kind of where I am as far as drawing. It's taken me about four to five years to get to a certain point of design where I feel like I understand enough to finally start creating the ideas in my head. But it just took you know, four to five years of classes on design theory and composition and you know, ultimately a master's program. So uh, you don't necessarily have to go to a certain level, but you can pick what's right for you. For me, I really wanted to have technique as a strong point because, as I said before, it really shows kind of your value and relationship and level of integrity to whatever industry that you've committed yourself to. Um, so for me, a master's level education was part of my own values in wanting to be a fashion designer. So. There you guys have it. So thank you for joining. I see I got some comments. I really appreciate when you all leave comments and especially feedback on topics that you're interested in hearing more on. Um, and yeah, it's just great to have you here. Good luck out, out there in the world in this crazy time. <laughs> and I will see you next week. Take care.